You're listening to the Boxing Voice. It's showtime! Welcome back, welcome back, boxing fans. Blood is good. Tired face, a man's in blood. Blood is emotion. Too much blood coming out of the eye. Blood is a story, a drama. Deep gas, blood pouring right into his eye. Blood is what we want to see in terms of passion. Blood streaming now from the cut the eye. Nose, his mouth, his cheeks swollen, and he's still tall. What we want is a bloody good fight tonight. We have Heather, the Heat Hardy. Is this you? This is me. I think I need to talk to you every night because you make me smile and blush over here. <laughs> never been a lame ho. Never been a lame ho. Yeah, I love trip. Um, I'm okay. You're serious? You serious? And that's the good thing about UK. That's why I can't hate on them guys, man. They love fucking boxing. Some fighters in England, they all bum. Did you hear what this idiot just said? Yo, son, you're gonna get your ass beat by Molina, son. Are you fucking that. kidding me? He's that. overrated. Do some pushes for me right now. Get get your hands go. Get out of here, Virgo. Go home. Boxingvoice.com. This is why we use the word sensation. All right, everybody, welcome back to another edition of the Boxing Voice, a special edition because uh, ESPN is giving us something special tomorrow night. Um, so we had to preview it. And, uh, you know, for those that don't know and stumbled across the show, this will be the review of Hassan and Dom versus Curtis Stevens that's going to take place uh, tomorrow night. So uh, really quick, man. You already know, thank everybody who continue to support us and go to theboxingvoice.com for everything boxing and all the latest and greatest news. And uh, checking out the stories of our very many writers, thank you. Um, for those that choose to help us out and uh, use our affiliate links, thank you. All right, so um, let's talk about this fight. And before we do that, uh, if you're listening on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, please share this video. Help us that way. And, uh, you know, iTunes five-star review always works. 646-478-3068. Hassan and Dom, Curtis Stevens. Uh, let's talk about this fight, man. I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring on my host for the day, man. I'm my host for the day. Some of you love him. Some of you hate him. But you got to respect him. Introducing the hard-hitting ringside, Robbie. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody, and uh, I'm glad to be here, Ness. So, Robbie, man, um, let's talk about this fight a little bit, man. I, I don't know really how to get into it besides the fact that it's a good fight. It's good for the division. Um Clearly, you know, maybe better things could be happening, but I think that this is uh, two top 10 middleweights getting in with each other. So I, don't, I think this is better. I think this is the best that could be happening on this division who are not champions because these two men are trying to earn an opportunity to get a title shot at one of those champions. So granted, this may not be Golovkin Quillen, but it's the next best thing. I, I think it's a decent fight uh, just for the simple fact that it's not on HBO. It's not on Showtime. It's on free TV that most people can get. Um, and I think it's going to be entertaining for as long as it lasts. And, uh, and Dom used to own, uh, he used to have one of the, one of the titles, which Quillen uh, took away from him. So you have to respect this fight on on that level and every time curtis stevens has been involved in a boxing match he's always put on an entertaining show whether he's won or lost so i think whoever tunes in tomorrow night on espn2 um you're going you're going to you're going to have a good main event 
Yeah, well, it's fair to say that theboxingvoice.com has Curtis Stevens ranked at 13, while we have Hassan and Dom at 6. So, all right, so it's not two top 10 middleweights, but like you said, anytime Curtis Stevens is in the ring, it's exciting. Um, now, the level of opposition, this is the thing, because how, how, do you, how do you truly, you know, break this fight down? Because we've seen so much of Curtis, and we've seen very little of Hassan. And, uh, you know, all, all that the casual fan has to assess Hassan, of course, is his loss. So this year, we've been doing a lot of that. We've been giving the loser a lot of fucking credit. I mean, we gave Diego Chavez a lot of credit for that Keith Thurman loss. So much so that, you know, the majority, or it was split down the middle. You may remember, because I'm sure you took the tally. I, we probably did a tally on that fight. But Rios Chavez, I don't think very many people have Rios uh, as the favorite in that fight. No, they did not. I, I don't have the tally in front of me, but a lot of people were were picking Chavez to to uh, uh, win that fight. And, of course, we know how that turned out. And, and again, even with all the shenanigans, he still, in my opinion, was dominating Rio. So, again, we got to give this man credit for a loss. And that's really what we're doing with Hassan because we haven't seen him. I mean, who's he fought? Like, I don't even know. Anybody that he's fought besides Peter Quillen, like, I don't know. I mean, I've heard of some of these guys, like, there's uh, Giovanni Lorenzo. He's fought him, but what does that, that doesn't tell me anything. Like, Lorenzo's a Dominican bum, you know? Oh, I, th I think what this is going to do, Ness, is we're going to find out how good Indom really is when he, when he steps into a, the ring with a guy like Curtis Stevens. And you know what kind of fighter he is. So if Adam has any weaknesses, Stevens is going to expose him. Because remember, everybody was jumping all over Triple G's case because he was fighting one bum after another and, and uh, disposing of guys very quickly. And we had a lot of questions about how Triple G could take a punch and this and that and the other. And Curtis Stevens was really the first guy to really step in the ring and really show that uh, Triple G could take some shots, even though Triple G eventually won the fight. Uh, he, uh, we were able to respect Triple G because Curtis Stevens actually gave him a decent fight. Well, I couldn't have said it better myself because that is definitely when I had a change of heart on Gennady Golovkin. Uh, when I seen Curtis Stevens give him a two piece that any man should at should at least took a step back and um you know Gennady didn't do that so again i think highly of curtis stevens um all that being said i i think that uh he's durable uh i think that in the terriano johnson fight he probably underestimated it which is oh not a pass at all in my opinion because you're a fighter this is what you do for a living you know, you should always train to win, not train depending on your opponent. So uh, if he took Terry Arnold Johnson lightly because he was an unknown dude with 14 fights and he thought he was going to blow him out like he normally blows out guys that are of that level uh, or, or, or of that name, you know, that, that no name notoriety, and uh, he had a, he had he had to dig deep to get that win, so much so that pe some people wouldn't be mad to get a rematch. So Stevens also has something to prove, but I think that he might still be the more durable fighter. the The question here is, did Terriano Johnson lay that blueprint, and could Hassam and Dom implement that Terriano Johnson blueprint and do it better? Well, I, I think I think Ness, if if uh, and Dom studied film of that fight, um, he could uh, you know use that blueprint. But we don't know what kind of fighter in, in Dom really is, and so th this again uh, brings back to the point. This is going to be an intriguing fight because you have one guy that 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 showed you a blueprint on how to beat this guy, 
but you have another guy that actually has something to prove because of his performance. And uh, I remember we had Johnson on the show and, and we, we didn't really know who he was, but he gave an impressive interview. He's very confident in that fight. And for the first nine rounds of that fight, he really showed how you could beat a guy like Curtis Stevens. And then uh, the 10th round came around and we all know what happened. So uh, this is an intriguing fight on many, many different levels. It absolutely is. This has, this could possibly be a fight of the year candidate. I mean, just because of the fact that Hassan and Dom continues to get off the floor. But um, I'm going to get into that and remind me to touch that. I want to get to this one caller here, man, and give him his opportunity. Uh, 941, you're live. Who's this? Always yourself from Florida. I'm What's going on, brother? Times of Cuban. What's happening? I'm surprised you guys did this like, man, you doing you putting in work, man. Oh man, I got to, man. You know I love this. I know. I have seen it. I've seen it. you blowing up the Twitter on me, blowing up a couple things. I'm glad to see you on it. Yeah, I'm surprised this uh I like I really, really like this bout, man. It just came out of nowhere. But I think you're right. Like this is uh like I could have thought Curtis Stevens could have been like a for real matchup that um Kid Chocolate could have took, you know what I mean? So I mean, I, I think he would have gave him – I mean, I still think Kid Chocolate would win, but I th I thought that Curtis Stevens couldn't have been, like, his next credible opponent that was a non-title shot, you know what I mean? But, uh, obviously, he can go for a title since he vacated, but I still don't even know what he's doing. Like, I even I even, <laughs> I even even hit Kid Chocolate on the, uh, on the Twitter account, and I was like, man, I don't know what you're doing, you know, for 2015. I was like, but I hope whatever you were promised, you know, it comes just as big or bigger. And he, and he wrote me back. He's like, uh, I won't disappoint, which basically probably tells me he has no idea what's going to happen. Or he just, you know, from that interview I've seen that you did with him, he just wanted to keep it quiet, you know. And he got to do the best for him and his family, and I understand that, you know what I mean? But people are giving him hell for it, for vacating that title. Yeah, I, 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 I just know. I just have to be honest with you guys. I just I just truly believe that they don't care. And and at the end of the day, why should they? Right? Why should they? If if yeah. somebody is gonna be giving you all this money, like if somebody's paying you, listen what listen to what is happening here. They're paying you not to do your job. Mm-hmm. So why yeah, why and, wouldn't and you say yes? Like fuck it. Hell yeah, you telling me you good because look again, yeah. this is all hypothetical. Yeah. This is all, all right. hypothetical he didn't just because close I don't wanna money. I don't he, wanna get sued yeah. here, but this is all hypothetical. Yeah. But the, the, the point is like if if I just had a son and you and I and I'm getting this this yeah. backdoor money, man, yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> Forget the fans. I'll talk and that's, to the fans and that's, next year. That's, that's that's so for real. I'm telling you, man, it is what it is, man. We gotta start thinking like because, what they are, they're human beings. Yeah, they're human beings. Okay, he's just having this baby. I mean, he's, he's even telling you that why why he's interviewing you. You know what I'm saying? Like he's holding his newborn. So obviously he's focused on his newborn. You know what I mean? That's great for him. You know, he doesn't have to worry about getting uh you know ready for a fight or whatever. You know, the purse fit, Rock Nation. But I mean, I think he's. I just see him in my mind in the next picture under that Heyman boxing. You know what I mean? Like Guerrero and uh, well, of course you what's know. His but name? But that's the that's the <laughs> obvious though because he's with Heyman, so you know that yeah. you know that's where it's going. But listen, I want to keep it on Hassan and Stevens because they're not on that powerful Heyman level or Showtime right. and HBO. These guys are trying to get there, and, and they deserve their shine, man, because this is a hell of a fight, I believe. But when when was this scheduled? Like I I don't even remember. You know what what like. How long have these these guys have real training camps the whole time? They're in because I don't even remember this fight coming up. I don't remember talking about it. I don't remember yeah, nothing no, of it. no, definitely this fight. Um, this fight has definitely been scheduled for a while now, and uh, before it was scheduled, there was talks of it. Um, you know, I, I I I think the guy's name is Michael King, who's promoting this fight, and um, he uh. He he used to do some type of uh, production work for. I wish Vic was on because Vic uh, interviewed this guy. You know, um, he did some type of production work for Oprah Winfrey and for the Wheel of Fortune. Just look him up though. Um, 
Yeah, and and you know, I, I believe I believe Ness in the last show you indicated that this is being done on a six hundred thousand dollar budget where where yes. you've got to actually do the whole show with six hundred thousand oh. dollars. Yes, yes, yes. I was on the line. See, I was on the line with Vic, but I, you know, it wasn't my interview. I was he, you know, I was just helping him out. But um, so I was. I remember certain things, and whatever I said last week is what I said. He definitely told me it was a six hundred thousand dollar budget, though. I think I did. I end up asking him like one or two questions actually. And that's six fights right there. What, what you got? You got uh, a middleweight. No, 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 but that. Specimen. No, but that's six hundred thousand just for this fight. Oh, okay. I thought it was for the event. Yeah, well, well yeah, well, yeah, for the event. But you know, most of that is going to the uh, the the main event. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But uh, and, uh, and, the, and, uh, and the fact that he. The fact that he got ESPN interested in this kind of fight is, is that's a good thing for us. Well, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. He said that he was gonna he was gonna have some more dates next year. Um, it's a you know I'm sure Vic. It's Rose an odd day though. I mean, a Wednesday. A Wednesday is a super odd day for for a boxing. Well, this boxing wasn't match. on the schedule. I mean, See, this is what you got to understand. And look, let me place you on hold. But this is what you got to understand. This wasn't on the schedule. That's the power of Michael King. He got ESPN to add this, and now we got it. But it came on that budget, um, and that's what I'm saying. Look him up. You know he, he, you know he's doing his thing or whatever. Let me see. Five one six. You're live. Who's this? Yo, KH. KH, what up, man? You was clowning up, man? last night, man. What's up? You was clowning last night. How are you gonna say I said Omar Chavez and 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 uh, <laughs> And Alvarez, yo, I clearly <laughs> stated that if you like a one-sided beatdown, then yeah, go watch it. It was fun. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right, I knew you'd be listening, man. That's why we threw your name out there. And I was yo, talking you around. <laughs> yo, so talk to me about Curtis Stevens and then Dom, man, because I think this is an awesome, awesome fight that merits some attention, so much so that we out here doing this extra show uh, because this is a very intriguing fight to me. I think, yeah. it could, I think it could get really Terry Arnold Johnson, Curtis Stevens, like, all over again simply because, you know, um, Johnson, I mean, uh, Stevens, He's he's put people down. He has the power, and then Dom has been down, but he keeps getting up, and he could bang himself. Yeah, and the Quillen cool fight was an exciting fight. Yeah, so. he could hit back, yeah. man. So uh, this this could be very very good. This fight. Yeah, yeah, and I'm into it. You know, I'm into it more so than most of my coalition, you know, boys, because uh, you know, I'm a big Stevens fan. I'm kind of biased because you know he trained he, him and my boys spar together a lot. They put in work. He works at it at the gym I hang out at every now and then. So, you know, I'm a big Stevens fan. A couple of times I met him, he was always cool to me. So I, I, I root for the guy. Plus, you know, I, it, since he's come back, you know, after his layoff and he's been with main events, basically every fight he's been in, you know, when he's in there with a guy he should wash, he washes him in a round or two and puts him out. And all the other fights have been fun fights. The Toriano Johnson, the Curry Stevens, you know, even the Finley fight was watchable. So, you know, I root for him. I hope he wins this and gets a chance at a bigger fight as well. And um, I think it's a fun fight. Wednesday night's good for me because, let's face it, this is, you know, a big football country. And Saturday's college football, they have like 60 games on TV. You ain't going to get any numbers for a fight like this. And ESPN ain't going to put it, any fight on on a Saturday. So, you know, Wednesday's a pretty big time slot. You know, there's no uh, no NFL on Wednesday. There's no NBA playing right now. You know, baseball playoffs is on, but it's not in big swing. So I think he has a chance to, you know, get some eyes. Yeah, and, but I don't you know. know. It's a work night, job, though. Gets... It's, nah, but it's a work night, player. It's a work night, man. Yeah, but it's not that late. You know what I mean? Old heads like me, you know, I'm I'm in the house with, with the girl on the couch. You know what I mean? After work, you know, waiting for the next day. So, you know, I'm not trying to be in the bars. I could be up until 10 or whatever, you know. I hear you. I hope, man. I hope that this does awesome because uh, Michael King made it seem like he's going to get a couple of more dates for next year. And, uh, you know, he, like all promoters, they say the good, the right thing. So, you know, all right, he's just starting. So I'm forced to say what he said. But, you know, he's like, 
he basically wants the good fight. He feels that match because then Dom is his fighter. So clearly, is it? Yeah, and Dom is his fighter. Yeah, because so, I know they won the purse bid over main events. Yeah, so that's the thing. The bigger, so clearly, of the purse bid. Clearly, he believes in matching his fighters tough because this is not a eat like there's no indication that and Dom should beat Curtis Stevens. Yeah, and, and you mentioned it before, I think, when you mentioned this guy's past and, and his production quality shows he he's on. I think he gets that, like, you know what? Even if your guy loses and it's a great fight, you know, people are gonna want to see him again. He and he has a chance to to work his way back up just on the entertainment factor. And I think that's good when there's a guy coming from the entertainment world and they're not really blinded by that, you know, if you lose, your, your, your career's over. You know what I mean? So I think that's a big thing. But I can say Curtis Stevens is a lot better shape than he was in the Tony Johnson um, fight from what I heard from people. And I uh, uh, heard from you, people like, you know, from like a week people. or two ago and he was looking real good. You don't got to hear it from people because I spoke to uh, Andre Roger yesterday. I just didn't put the audio out because I didn't think people would want to listen to that. But I spoke to him yesterday, and uh, he told me that Curtis is, like, in, in the best shape of his life. Yeah, yeah. He was over in the gym by me. That's, like, 20 minutes from me where my boy trains at, like, born a couple weeks ago. They said he was he was looking in dog shape, man. He's, he's ripped. He's, you know, he's looking real good. So yeah. that's, that's a and big look, thing, you know? I was on the beat a couple of weeks ago when I did that when I did that Broadway boxing car and remember I caught him in there. Oh, BB Kings, right? Yeah, I caught him in there and he was in gym clothes. Late night. Yeah. Late night. He still was in sweats and and sneakers and a sweater. Yeah, late night. So um, yeah, he's probably training real hard for this. Yeah, you know this is his, this is how you know what it is like. You seen it when Jacobs got that gifted title fight kind of against uh fletcher and you know i ain't gonna say nothing bad about jacobs that's my man too you know he's always been cool with me the few times i i, I met him and everything you know he, he took me up so i don't want to say nothing bad about him but you know that's a gifted title that's we gotta keep it real and and i remember curtis that night tweeting something about like you know <laughs> damn this dude is you know trained in, in the same gym same area he, he gets a title fight against Fletcher. Triple G has to get, he had to get his title fight against Triple G. You know what I mean? Yeah, so but he that's probably wants to go out and get that title, you know? Listen, but listen, but listen, the thing is this. Um, Curtis Stevens can't be sour because Curtis Stevens fucked up his shit. He was hot at one point, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, the and whole back in the day with the yeah, Dash shit. Yeah, yeah. He was hot at one point. He was like Broadway Boxing's first star. That's when I was watching boxing on a regular basis on weird nights. You would see Broadway Boxing. you see it. Yeah, man. He was hot at one point, but he always had them little weird-ass losses. You know what I'm saying? Well, you got to understand, he was fighting at like 175, at like 5'7". You can't do that. You know what I mean? Because he was but, always but, a real but, sick guy. No, 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 and, but again, you don't have see, no, no, no. Again, you don't get, you don't give fighters passes. You're a fighter. This is your job. So if he was yeah, fighting at one seventy, that's, that's why when I, mean, I mentioned on, since he's on. come back from his like two year hiatus, again, that's why that's why he that's yeah. why he can't be sour because Danny Jacobs' yeah. only loss is to Prague. Pure and, yeah, and, and, and Danny Jacobs. You know, while we could give him shit for his comeback or whatever, but before the Prague loss, he was a he was a, a highly touted prospect. He won the Golden yeah, Gloves a, a bunch of times. You know, he was exactly they was putting him in there because they thought he was ready. So oh, after yep. that, he had you know I'm not defending him. He fought five bums after that. After that loss, he fought five bums and got a title shot. But he signed yeah. the Golden Boy. He's reliable. You know what I'm saying? Curtis Stevens was unstable. Now, mm -hmm. now, now, and, and, and understand what I mean by unstable because he was at 175, like you said. He was fighting Jesse Brinkley at 168. Yeah. But now, a, a focused Curtis Stevens can make 160 healthy. So that means all mm -hmm. of the years that Danny Jacobs was in the gym because they got the same trainer. Yep. They got the same trainer. And that's Kurt's so, uncle, right? So I don't right? know. Like, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I'll take that shit with a grain of salt because they probably boys and I don't know why he mad because he know he shouldn't, he, you know, his career wouldn't have been like this. I'm not saying mad. I think focused. that's more motivation for him to, ah, oh, it's my time too now. You know what I mean? This dude got his title. That was my time too, you know? 
And this well, is the way he had it gets it without necessarily having to go through Triple G. You know? player. He had his time. He had his time. He just it, it's nobody's fault but his own that it was a tough, tougher time. Like the Triple G yeah. thing is 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 because listen, when you are undefeated fighter or one loss fighter like Jacobs that's marketable with cancer, of course they're gonna keep you away from Triple G. They trying to yeah. make you into the Triple G. I mean, people just got to understand. And, and not the, for nothing, the, the not necessarily. I think he got that Triple G fight just because he was willing to fight it. Not necessarily. And, he and that's what I love style. about him, KH. That's what I love yeah. about him. Like when I talk to him at Broadway Boxing, he still wants Triple G. So that brings me to this because we went so far. That brings me to this. Curtis Stevens and Dom. Curtis Stevens goes in there tomorrow night and he white. He, he does what my man, the, the Bieber Beast, Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag the better beast. You know, no, no, forget, <laughs> forget the. Just hashtag better beast. Better beast, yeah. Better beast. That's what I was tweeting today, right? And uh, he goes in there and better beast this motherfucking dude tomorrow night. Does he deserve a rematch immediately with Triple G? If 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 Triple G can't get a fight with Cotto, can't get a fight with Canelo. Is that is that yeah, an immediate that rematch? I don't see why not, Ness, because uh, if Curtis Stevens goes into the ring tomorrow night and looks impressive, uh, I don't see why not. I mean, uh, that's why you take a fight like this. You you uh, you take a fight like this. You look impressive, and the the more impressive you look. The better the better shot you have at getting but, a bigger fight. But 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 Robbie, the question is. Even if you better beast and Dom, is and Dom a big enough win to merit an immediate rematch with Golovkin? Well, the only reason why it might be is because he was a former title holder. That would be the only that that would be the only the well, the only logical reason you could use. Otherwise, probably not. I don't think he would warrant it. You know, I think that chapter is closed. I think he would have to have more fights down the line. And I know he also mentioned wanting to fight Kirkland or somebody like that. That's a fight that I always want. Yo, you know what I like about like Curtis? Two years. What I love about Curtis is is, is if, that he w if he wins this fight in any fashion that is a positive one, he's going to talk yeah. shit. He's going to call out Golovkin. He's going to call, he's gonna call names because he's not – he's so real, man. That's what he's going to do. He's, and if they ask that goes him, to main events though too, uh, Ness. And I was gonna ask how you feel about man because I like Kathy Duva, man. They match their guys tough. They work with other promotions, and like I don't think they're scared to the same way. They're not scared to lose a fight if it's a good matchup where that fighter gets decent money for the fight. Yeah, well, but, and it could be good but, but entertainment. KH, I mean, I love Kathy Duva too, but you gotta understand when you the little promoter, you just some you gotta do you these take things. what you can. Yeah, you, no, you gotta put your you you. You're the B side coming in, so you gotta match your fighter tough because you've given him the opportunity. You know they, That's they true. the small promoters rarely have the the opportunity to build the fighter because the bigger promoter comes in and steals them. Like Goosen did to Ward, and that's why he was fighting. Like and rest in peace to Goosen. Mm -hmm. Um, you know. He was always good to me and Vic. I remember interviewing him uh, at the at the, my first time covering the BWAs. He was definitely a nice guy, funny, funny individual. Uh, his blazers were phenomenal, and uh, he treated me good every time I seen him at a fight. He's having them pinstripe joints, right? Looking like an eighty. He had all colors, man. <laughs> he had all colors. You would have to go on a YouTube back like three years to see what he had on because uh, I think uh, mm. Vic did that one. But um, yeah, man. So rest in peace to Goosen. But yeah, Goosen did did Ward and and uh, and Paul Williams. You know. Every James like Tony Lou, brought back resurrection. Lou DeBella, look, Lou DeBella did, did Martinez. You know Gary Shaw. He did. He did Chad Dawson. You know what I'm saying? He did yeah. Timothy Bradley and got and they stole him. That and this is what happens, man. The little fish gets gets eaten in the big pond. So Kathy Duva has to match her fight and stuff. But but um, you know, people always mention like Don King and stuff, but they forget that Dude Duva was out there at that time and he was doing fights and that's where Kathy Duva comes from and you know she's a good promoter man especially yo her company's all women too i believe i've never seen men there 
Yeah, for the most part. Uh, and a, another fight that would be good for Stevens if he looks good tomorrow night is a possible Sam Solomon fight. Uh, there's no reason why Curtis Stevens couldn't fight a well, guy like well, that. Well, that's the point of this. But that's fight. what this eliminator's for. Is yes. the winner of the Jermaine skit. Yes, that's what this 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 is for. You know, so so I think that Curtis Stevens would need to win this fight and the next one, and, and, and then and the he's next in one. contention. And the next one. Yep. Three more? No, this one and then the next one, Sam Solomon. This way, if he has a strap, it could be a unification bout. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, he's so got to go beat, for that you title. Beat Endom, and then you beat Solomon, then you get, you know, Triple yeah. G. He's got to go for that title because Triple G is looking to unify. So Triple G wouldn't care who has it. He wants it. But, guys, let me get to some other callers here. Uh, KH, just do uh, your thing, man. Thanks, man. All right, brother. I was gonna keep KH on. Not uh, did I go to nine one four? Yeah, I went to nine one four. Seven one eight. You're live. Who's this? Yo, Ness. What up, though, baby? What's going on? Oh, what up? What up? What up? What up? What up? Hey, yo, man. You know what I'm saying? I was on here Sunday, but you know what I'm saying. My mouth was messed up, yeah, so yeah. to all the killers. I ain't now. really talking all I that. I had some mouth and worked under my mouth and all that. Yeah, man. And I had the same like that, thing, yeah. bro. I, I had to get two wisdom teeth pulled. Yeah, that's what happened, man. That's why I couldn't really talk. But I was listening though, and all that. But yeah, um, I like I like Stevenson, man. I always liked him. I like him. yo. He a he a he, yo. He a real Brooklyn street dude, yo. Yo, who ain't scared of nothing? Scared of no one in the boxing industry. And I, I believe yo, when he knocked this dude out tomorrow, his name's gonna be up in them fights, man. Canelo, he gonna call out Canelo. He gonna want them big money fights, man. Cause that's what he do, all around the world. He gonna like the big money fights. And um, another thing I had to say about, you know, what I'm saying, uh, man, this year they're coming to this end. Of this year, man, it's still a lot of good boxing matches come on. But you know, what I'm saying, who you who's a man Khan fighting? Is he fighting in December or what? Or he's still chasing Mayweather? Nah, they say he's fighting in December. It's rumored it, it, it could be Josecito Lopez, maybe. Man, ain't Kirkland a bomb? What's wrong with this dude? He's smoking. Man, what's wrong I don't with Kirkland, know. man? I don't know what's wrong Kirkland with Kirkland might be on some drugs or something, man. That dude bugged out, man. He got mental problems, man. <laughs> he, man, he better, man. He's not really like, he's up in the 80s, man. He's 35 years old, ain't he? I don't think he's that old, is he? Man, he, he already punch drunk. He better take that money, man. That two hundred seven thousand and fight that dude, man. He worrying about what the promoter get, man. You don't need to worry about what the promoter getting. That's the, your payday, brother. What's wrong with that dude, man? He always do that. That's why, yo. I bet you he ain't gonna get no fights for a minute. Watch, watch what I tell you, man. But that's basically all I had to say, man. You know I love the show, Ness, man. I know, man. Love the show, man. And I'm always listening, man. My ears is always open, man. And stuff like that. Oh, yeah, I got to email you. That's what I got to do. I'm going to email you in a little while. Okay. For what I told you I was going to do and shit. Word. All right. All, All right, right QB. Thanks for calling in, brother. Uh, let me see. We got 253. We're talking Stevenson and Dom, brother. Who's this? 253, you're live. What's happening? This is Lenny from the Northwest. Lenny, what's going on, brother? Not too much. Uh, I don't know what the topic is. I just got on. So Stevenson I, I versus Endom. Curtis Stevens versus Endom is the topic because it's taking place tomorrow night on ESPN2. They're going to televise a 12-round IBF eliminator fight between two middleweight contenders, 130 That's and 0. I oh, know 31 and 18 oh. knockouts, and uh, Curtis Stevens is 27, 4, and 20 knockouts. So, yeah, that's a tough fight. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, 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 this is all I'm just not hearing about that, but uh, I was just calling because I, I was gonna tell you guys what up and then uh, let you know that the I thought the coalition did a good job filling in for you on the with the tooth pull and everything. So, <laughs> but, uh, they had a topic going on and they were talking about 
uh, who's going to, how's Mayweather going to compete with the Pacquiao shit. And I, I think that Mayweather will, will sell, even if he fights American, I think he'll put up good numbers just because that's what he does. You know, I, I don't know. I, until, I don't, someone I don't, proves, until someone proves us wrong. I don't think that uh, Mayweather, I mean, if, if it was even possible, which it's not because the networks won't allow it, but if it, if it was even possible to for them to go head-to-head -head the way that Canelo and Chavez went head-to-head, -head, um, I, I think it's going to definitely affect the numbers. It has to. Yeah. And, then I, and then I had a question for you because I know you're the Al Heyman guru. I'm, I'm okay, not. If, I'm not, man. I get, <laughs> I, yo, I get, I'm so misunderstood. I'm telling you. No, I was just giving you shit, man. I'm just giving you a hard time. Uh, no, my question is, though, if uh, De La Hoya still has supposedly 70-something fighters under his thing and he just went to HBO with Canelo, that's not guaranteeing any of the other fighters to HBO, right? And if so, uh, aren't some of those 70 fighters being represented by De La Hoya still being represented by Al Heyman? Yeah, that's the that's the whole thing. But um, to answer your question, this deal, of course, you know, I guess the deal is for Canelo. But look, Saddam Ali has a fight and it's going to be on HBO. And Jason Velez has a fight and it's going to be on HBO. And it's top ranked golden boy. So they're doing business. And as long as they're doing business, I guess HBO is happy because they th then that means no, yeah. that they have a bigger talent pool. So, um, you know, nothing has been official as far as uh, no Golden Boy fighters on Showtime yet either. So we, we just have to sit and wait, man. I mean, you know, I, we should not be well, talking about that today, like that. my friend. I may have to put you on mute unless you want to talk about Stevens and Ndam because – uh, this is a special fight because it's going to be on tomorrow night. Something that's not usually done. Uh, a new, a new promoter, a new promoter in town. You know, pushed his weight around, and he got a Wednesday night date. So this show is specific to that because this is a pretty big deal. No, I'll have to go with Stevens on that. I, I like them both, but I, I like Curtis Stevens a little more. And I, I, part of me always wants to see, you know, I'd like to see him get in the ring with Triple G just one more time just to see if he can even try to go the distance. I know his eyes were bugged out last time, but uh, he was doing good up until that point. Absolutely, brother. Well, well, thank you again for calling in. And, you know, that's exactly my point is what the caller made. Um, I would like to see Stevens do it again too, because I believe that he has that dog in him where even if he fails against uh Golovkin again, he's gonna make it an even better fight than the first one. You know, he's gonna have well, a little a little more confidence. He's gonna he's gonna take a little less chances at times. He's gonna have a different look. And maybe there's not a different outcome, but that doesn't mean it doesn't make for a great fight for us because you know. That's what we're lacking in our general, well, my generation. Obviously, you got to uh, definitely get a lot of that. But that's what I feel we're lacking. We're lacking those those trilogies, you know? Like, where's those Pacquiao Morales? Like, not Pacquiao Marquez, for God's sakes. I'm tired of that too many times already. But, you know, fights like that. Like, we, yeah, we got Rios Alvarado. I mean... I guess and, it, uh, we, and I guess we, we also got we also got Rafael Marquez and um, Israel Vasquez four nah, times that, too. I don't know if you remember those fights. Yeah, I remember those. I remember those. I remember those. One of them he had yeah. to retire because of that eye. Ah. That's right. Um, no, I, I agree with you. And uh, look, Curtis Stevens is, is in a wonderful position because if he wins impressively tomorrow night, he goes and takes the title from Solomon which I still don't know how he got that win. Um, you know, if he, if he takes that title from Solomon, uh, then, you know, he's got a bargaining chip and triple G he wants to unify the title. So this would give him another option. If he can't get, uh, Cotto Canelo 
or any of those guys in the ring. And let's face it, a lot of people want to avoid Triple G, like he's got some terrible disease. Curtis Stevens is one of the guys out there who is not afraid of Triple G, and he wants to do it again. Well, the problem becomes this, because you know that boxing has to be a, a soap opera or else it wouldn't be good. And, and, and That's right. And, and in this soap opera, if Curtis Stevens wins, the problem becomes what happens when Sam Solomon, who I believe on October 8th fights Jermaine Taylor. Isn't it October 8th that he fights? Uh, I, th I thought it was the 18th, but uh, okay. you might oh, be 18, right. 18 sounds better. Eight, I don't have it in yeah. front of me. I don't have it in front of me. 18 sounds better. Yeah, because that, that's a Saturday night, and HBO is going to have a, a card that night. I don't know if that's a part of it or not, but I think it's the 18th. Okay, well, we'll, we'll find out because I'm going to just go on the schedule here. But, okay. um, yeah, you know, so if Jermaine Taylor wins, then we got Al Heyman in the mix again. That's right. <laughs> and that And that can definitely – Damage things obviously, and now and now and Al Heyman is starting to show that he's got too much power. And it's uh, you know, I, I was one of those people on board with what he was doing, but uh, the more I see, the more I'm starting to go the other direction. I mean, he, he's canceling fights, he's he's promising fighters this and promising fighters that. Um, he's starting not to be good for boxing. Well, again, those are all rumors. We don't know what he's doing. Remember that. That's the that's and that's all I say. You know, yeah. That's right. It's a little. It's a little fine line. That the, I don't see that fight on this freaking schedule. I'm blind. Well, I guess. Uh, has it on been the 18th, canceled? On the 18th, I see uh, Gennady Golovkin. And okay. uh, and I see Walter's fight, and then uh, uh, Steven Steve Cunningham. But uh, anyway, you, you might you might have been right on the eighth, but I didn't remember that because that's, no, no, that's no, a win. It's not the eighth either. It's not the eighth either. I'm okay. wrong. All right. Hmm. Oh, it is the eighth. San Solomon versus Jermaine Teller, Biloxi ESPN two. So oh, okay. All right. So that's two consecutive Wednesdays. We're getting fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, you were that's right. Good. Sorry about that. Yeah. So this Wednesday is going to kick off that little two-part series back to back. Um, and again, man, I guess I guess we should just wrap it up, give our picks here, break it down. I guess I, I don't really know how to break this fight down, other than that uh, I have to go with Stevens. I think that he's. Uh, clearly the more talented fighter because I've only watched uh, in damn one time. Um, yes. And Dom seems like a very tough dude, but I always uh, favor slick boxers and, and Curtis Stevens is that um, we get wrapped up in his power and we get wrapped up when he goes to war, but when given opportunity, he can box. Um, he did it versus, I think it was Derek Finley. It was a stinker, but he got the win. You know, it was on NBC Sports, I remember. You know, so uh, if he can't get his guy out of there and his guy can't get him out of there, he's definitely an okay boxer with some slick with some slick moves, um, you know, and uh, he, he definitely has power. That left hook is real. So, yeah, yeah no. I'm going to go with Curtis Stevens over in Dom, and uh, I'm not picking around because I'm not good at that. No, neither am I. And I to I have to agree with you. I think what's going to happen is early in the fight, Curtis Stevens is going to display his power and find out what what uh, and Dom can handle. And if Dom can handle his punch and deal with it, then he's going to put on his boxing skills. But I think early on, he's going to try and get him out of there. Yeah, I mean, it could end up being a war is what I'm saying. I I feel that it has the potential for that because if Ndam presses the action, Curtis Stevens likes the counterpunch. Um, so, you know, it could end up being a, a war. Let me let me double check the switchboard, see if uh, anybody's here because I think B wanted to call in, but I don't see him. 
But uh, yeah, this could end up being a war, and 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 uh, I like it. I I want to see if and Dom is gonna push Curtis Stevens and push the action because the last time that they pushed him, he gassed out. Now, yeah, you know his trainer KH uh, is also telling us, and he you know he's in that in those New York City gyms. So you know, um, maybe he trained well. Maybe he's gonna come in good, and it, and even if he pushes the action, it wouldn't matter. But all that is what makes this fight intriguing. You know, the fact that we don't know much about Dom, but we know that he has some pop and we know that, you know, he can take a shot, you know, makes this fight all that much better. And uh, I think that it's awesome, man, that we're getting a Wednesday night fight. And, you know, for guys that continue to crap on this year, here's another one. Now all we got to do is hope that it's great, but here's another one. So on that note, man. What's up, my, uh, Robbie? Uh, I was going to say, and remember this, you're going to have uh, Teddy Atlas uh, doing the analysis, and he, he'll break down both fighters very, very well. So, And remember, with ESPN2, uh, you, you'll get to see how people watching the fight score because that's one of the things that they do. So so uh, for those of you that are casual, you'll you'll get an idea how the fight is going if it goes a few rounds. And remember, man, for those that, that don't know, you know, uh, Curtis Stevens and Hassan and Dom are ready to go to war. And that's going to take place tomorrow night on ESPN. It's going to be Friday Night Fights Special Edition on Wednesday night. It's going to be televised by ESPN2. It's a 12-round IBF eliminator fight between middleweight contender Hassan and Dom, who is 30-0 with one knockout, 18 KOs. Uh, one loss, excuse me. And he's coming from France. Curtis Stevens, my boy, who I'm picking, who I like. I like because I like his attitude. Again, you guys already know that. I like I like guys that, 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 that want to start something, man. Make it entertaining for me, man. I like that. So, you know, Curtis Stevens coming from Brooklyn. Uh, yeah, and, and he has a record of 27 and four with 20 KOs. Um, again, this is going to be a special edition on Wednesday night. So tell a friend, man, to tell a friend and, and it's a good fight that you can recommend. This is something that you can recommend to your friends and help boxing by getting this extra fight, good ratings so that these networks take chances like this again for you and I. For our view and pleasure. So Santa Monica, everybody in California and Santa Monica or the, the surrounding areas, if you're there, go check out this fight. Because it's 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 a guaranteed action fight. Buy a ticket, even if it's a nosebleed. Take your girl out. Help this sport continue to thrive because some people still like this sport. Some people still believe in this sport and and one of those men is michael king and uh yeah you know, and and, it, and it's wonderful to see a new guy on the scene and let's, let's see what he's able to do yeah well he's over the past several months they've already you know made a legitimate statement that they're a player in the boxing world i mean they, they've already put on events uh every time hassam and dom fights it's it, it's it's been them you know um and they're going to continue. Like I said, they're going to continue. And, and their their motto is to try and put on the most outstanding uh, fight that they that they can make. And uh, if they continue in this fashion, I'm I'm excited. Again, I'm this is a this is a big deal because it's an eliminator fight too. You know, so you know one of these guys again earns another shot at a world title, which is what these fighters dream for. You know, this is what they they work hard for. So hopefully, this fight lives up to that. We got two two guys who can hit and uh, two guys that could take a shot, man. So I'm interested, man. This has been the Boxing Voice. I'm your host, Ness GTO. I'm joined alongside today, Ringside Robbie. You can follow me on Twitter at NESGTO. And on that note, hey, Robbie, you want to shout out your Twitter? Yeah, it's uh, at Ringside Robert on Twitter. So um, you, you can go ahead and send messages there. I have somebody that checks it for me on a regular basis, and I'll definitely get back to you with answers. Look at Mr. Look at Rich Uncle Pennybags over here. He's got a secretary checking his tweets, guys. But on that note. <laughs>
Hey guys, I just want to send a special thank you to all of you guys that are listening to the Boxing Voice and downloading us on iTunes, rating us five stars. Uh, we would we'd like you to continue Welcome to back. Welcome like back. Like us on Boxing Facebook, fans. follow us on Twitter yeah, at the Boxing Voice. And for anybody interested in writing for the site, you can definitely do so by shooting. Yo, 732, look at what I do for you, man. What's up? Talk to me. You're live. I stopped Yo. the outro and everything for you. Who's this? Yo, Ness, he's your Wall Street, man. I appreciate that. I thought, you know what I'm saying, I thought I wasn't going to get on, but I really appreciate the love real quick. Um, I just want to show my man Curtis Stevens, even though I live in Jersey now, I got to represent for Brownsville, Brooklyn. Curtis Stevens, let's go. It's a great fight. It's 55-45 chance. The first fight, I definitely commend Michael King. But like I said, Brownsville, Brooklyn, all the way. I'm running with Curtis Stevens. Boxing voice, keep doing your thing. Ray Sai Robbie, Ness, keep holding it down. Let's go. Thank you, brother. Thank you, man. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, this has been another show. You know, um, I think the Beeb wants to do a show, so you never know. We might turn around and do one right here on YouTube on Demetrius Andrade. Really? Now he's not fighting Matt Korbov, too? Oh, man. Later.